Hello, my beautiful friends. I am Laurel Bleeden Maffei with Illuminating Souls, welcoming you to this episode of Sleepy Bedtime Blessings, a podcast designed to help you rest, relax, and fall asleep all while deepening in your connection with your beautiful team of angels who love you so. If we're meeting for the first time, I am an angelic practitioner, a spiritual teacher, and an encourager of souls. And I offer one-on-one angel sessions, which are beautiful. They take place over the phone. They're an hour long. And then I also offer soul mentoring, which provides for a longer form of support and a variety of classes designed to inspire your spirit. I have a new class that comes around about every six weeks or so. My classes take place over Zoom and are typically small in size. So one of the things I love so much about the way my business has developed over the in my 18th year or going into my 18th year of this work which is amazing is that there's a deep intimacy to my classes and sessions so if you're seeking community if you're seeking sacred space where you can really be witnessed and loved and supported I invite you to check out my offerings at my website, illuminatingsouls.com, where you can also sign up for my mailing list, and then you'll be apprised of everything I have coming down the road. And one last offering to share with you, I do have an Earth Angels Oracle deck, so if you're looking for a new Oracle deck to add to your repertoire, I invite you to check that out, and all of these links will be in the show notes. But for now, the angels and I are here to cultivate a sweet, sacred, soothing, restful space for you. You know what is hard to believe is this is somewhere around the second anniversary of launching this podcast. I'd have to go back and see the exact date, but it was launched in December of 2021. And here we are now. So maybe a little bit of a background on how this podcast came to be. So since about 2015, I have regularly been listening to sleep podcasts to help me drift off to sleep. And in the first sleep podcast I ever started listening to on a regular basis is Andrew Ackerman's Sleep With Me podcast, which I think is on its 10th year now, which is amazing. And I just fell in love with this podcast. Each episode was always something a little bit different. He might write a story, he might share something from his own life, or he would invite us over for an imaginary meal and we would cook together. And there was this rich intimacy to his podcast where I felt like I was getting to spend time with a friend. And something about it just really touched my heart. And so I fell in love with this niche of sleep podcasts. And then... I don't know, somewhere around 2020, I started listening to other sleep podcasts, including Get Sleepy, Sleepy, (laughs) Sleepy Bookshelf. You're hearing the theme here. (laughs) And each one was a little different. And I really, I fell in love with all of them. And I thought, I would love to add my voice to the inventory of sleep podcasts that are out there. Not to try to compete with anything, but to add to them, add to the options that are out there. And since it's me, I wove in the angels. And this was a a delightfully creative endeavor. 
And a couple of things I didn't think through, which is fine because I don't think creative endeavors are meant to be logical. So the first was almost none of my people in the Illuminating Souls family even knew what a sleep podcast was. So I had to introduce them to that concept. And number two is not a lot of them were even listening to podcasts, much less sleep podcasts. So I'm so glad I didn't think of that. I'm so glad <laughs> that hadn't intruded upon my creative joy. Because had I really thought that through, I might not have ever created this podcast. So this is just words of encouragement for you. Our creative endeavors... They don't have to make sense. They don't have to speak to the widest possible audience. You know what is so interesting about this podcast? The audience for it is very small. It's never really found its wings in a wider population. I think there are probably about 50 of you who listen on a regular basis. Many of you I know personally, and it is a pure joy to get to create this for you. I don't know why there seems to be an intimacy to much of my work, but I love that. It's like we get to come together and keep each other company. And we get to share in the little moments of life together and it is such an honor to get to spend this time with you so if you have a creative project you're thinking about and you think who'd be interested well maybe just you for right now and maybe you and a friend we get so caught up in how big things need to be and I have found this sweetness in intimacy so thank you for being here. So even though I did design this as a sleep podcast, I know many of you listen during your waking hours. So whether you are getting ready to go to bed or whether you're in the middle of your day, this wave of love is here for you. So I invite you to close your eyes unless you are driving in your car, in which case please keep them open and... Take some nice deep breaths in and out and allow yourself to come into this sweet space that is filled with love and gratitude for you because I am very grateful for you as are the angels. So usually what I do, because I do use this as a sleep podcast as well, and I think it's really cool that I have created something that helps me sleep. Like that's a win, right? <laughs> I usually prepare things for bedtime. I don't know, about an hour before I'm going to go to bed. It's like I can't even wait to go to bed. <laughs> I love my waking life, but I love bedtime. And I go to bed usually around 8 p.m., and I'm usually up somewhere around 3 or 4 in the morning, too. I don't actually get up. I'm not productive at 3 or 4 in the morning, but I am awake. So usually somewhere around 6.30, 6 or 6.30, I pull the covers back and fluff up the pillows. So there's this invitation that bedtime is coming soon. <laughs> and I get everything ready. So then as I start feeling a little tired or eight o'clock comes around, the bed is ready for me. And usually Wes stays up later than I do, so usually I go to bed before he does. And I crawl in bed and I pull up the covers and I put on my headphones, I use wired headphones. And then I pick an episode of a sleep podcast. And I turn the volume down lower than I would if I were listening to an audiobook. And I use my sleep timer so that 
The program will end in about 45 minutes. I find for me, 45 minutes is the sweet spot. Or if it's a shorter episode, I might set the sleep timer to stop playing when the episode ends. And then I just get cozy and I listen and the the sleep podcast creates this bridge that allows my mind to quiet down where I'm not thinking all of those random thoughts that show up in waking consciousness. I'm not replaying the day. I'm not thinking about tomorrow. I just focus on this very soft, sweet narrative that is inviting me in. And I find that it helps me drift off to sleep. And sometimes if I'm awake at three in the morning and Wes is still sleeping, I'll put on a sleep podcast again and I may not even fall asleep, but it's a sweet, quiet, soothing voice that keeps me company. Because usually at 3 a.m. I don't want to be energized. I'm not looking for an audiobook that's going to keep me awake and alert. I'm looking for something that keeps me in the quiet spaces. So that's how this sleep podcast has come to be. And if you're one of the 50 people who listen on a regular basis, thank you so much. And if you want to leave a review, that would be awesome or share it with a friend. I'm open to growing our audience to 60, 70 people, maybe. (laughs) I hear about these podcasts that have listenerships of like 10,000 people, and I can't even imagine how that would ever happen. And it doesn't have to happen. This is, this is our sweet space. How cool is that? It's like our secret sleep club. (laughs) Welcome to our secret sleep club, our sleep party. That just delights me. So I'm going to call the angels in. They're already here, but I love sharing the ritual with you. So I invite you to get cozy in whatever way works best for you. And take some nice deep breaths in and out. As we call ourselves gently into the heart of God, into the heart of divine love. And beautiful angels on high, I am so grateful for your presence here. I ask that you join us. And I know you are already here. And I ask that you infuse this broadcast with waves of love, waves of healing, waves of light in service to each of our beloveds. Angels, I ask that you help us release that which we no longer need to carry. I ask that you help us give our worries to you so that they can be transmuted into light and prayers and pathways forward. And dear ones, just take a nice deep breath in, allowing your angels to meet you where you are. The beautiful thing about working with the angels is you don't have to raise your vibration or shift your consciousness profoundly for them to be with you. The angels can meet you where you are. You might not be aware of them, but they are with you. And so the things that weigh heavy on you, they seek to help you carry these things. They seek to help transmute them as well. So just breathe and allow the love to find you where you are. You are such a beautiful soul. You really are. What a blessing it is to be here with the angels. 
and be together in this moment where we honor you. We honor your wholeness. We honor the pieces of you that feel tender. We honor everything that you are, everything that you are is honored here. So just breathe and I feel the angels bringing beautiful light to your heart chakra. And they invite you to receive their love. Just receive. You don't have to do anything with it. The, the, the muscle to receive is active within you. Just the way a flower might receive the sun. Perhaps you have a pet that always seeks out that beautiful shaft of sunlight that comes streaming through the window. Just imagine that you are receiving the light in this way too. You don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to be worthy of it. Just soak it up. And the beautiful divine instrument that is you will know what to do. Will know how to receive. So just imagine this beautiful light and love flowing to you now. The angels know what is happening in your life, in the world, in your heart, and in the sacred corners of your most intimate consciousness. And they bring this love forward for you now. A beautiful essence of divine home meets you where you are in your earthly life right now. You are a blessing here on earth. And you matter. And we are so deeply grateful for the gift of you. So if you have any prayers or intentions you wish to share with the angels, we invite you to bring them into your heart now. And they receive and amplify your prayer requests. And the love keeps streaming through. So my beautiful friend, I invite you to cozy on up and snuggle on in. And you rest. And while you rest, your angels will be with you. They will take good care of you. And while you rest, we're going to go on into story time. And I have a really lovely story time for you. And I'm looking forward to this story time because we're going to be talking about Trader Joe's, one of my favorite things to talk about on this podcast. But before we dive into the Sleepy Bedtime Blessings Trader Joe's episode, I must first honor and pay tribute to the Sleep With Me Trader Joe episodes by Drew Ackerman. So I already shared with you about his podcast, Sleep With Me, which was the podcast that got me into sleep podcasts in the first place. So he used to do these Trader Joe episodes where he would flip through the Fearless Flyer. They were my very favorite episodes that he did because it was like going shopping with a friend. When he would talk about a certain cheese that he loved, I would think, I love that cheese too. (laughs) And and there was just something so sweet. And it was like companionship. And sometimes he would do these real-time recipes where he would imagine that we're going to Trader Joe's together to buy the supplies. And then we would make the meal together. 
He doesn't do those episodes very often anymore. And I wish he did them more often because they are my favorite things that he does. And so I thought, you know what? I miss those episodes so much. I hope that it's okay if imitation is the highest form of flattery. It's not that I'm imitating him, but I am certainly taking inspiration from what he used to do and infuse some Trader Joe's love into this sleep podcast as well. So be sure to listen to his sleep podcast because it's wonderful. And I really have to honor him for everything that he has brought into the sleep podcast community. There would be no sleepy bedtime blessings if it was not for his podcast. So I realized I just recently did a Trader Joe's episode where we went through the November Fearless Flyer. But the new one is out for Christmas, for the holidays, with a lot of peppermint mocha stuff, which is my favorite flavor profile of the holiday season. So we have to do this one, right? And if you live outside of the U.S., and you don't get to visit Trader Joe's, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of it. It's very popular these days on social media. So it is a grocery store, but it's a different kind of grocery store. They typically only carry their own house brands of things. They work with co-packers. And so it's not as if you go into Trader Joe's to buy all the things you would normally buy from your neighborhood supermarket, where no matter what supermarket you go to, they're going to have the same selection of cereal and detergent and things like that. When you go to Trader Joe's, for the most part, you're only going to get Trader Joe's house brand of whatever you're buying. They do have some other brands there, for instance, protein bars. They'll have different manufacturers on the shelves. But for the most part, you're going for Trader Joe's stuff. My own little relationship with Trader Joe's was born when I lived in Los Angeles. And everyone said, you have to shop at Trader Joe's. And I have a whole Ode to Trader Joe's episode in the archives where you can hear more about my love affair with all things Trader Joe's. These days I go to Trader Joe's usually at least once a week. Where I live, there are four different Trader Joe's that I frequent. The one I go to most often is in Fairfield, and Fairfield is about 15 miles north of us. And the good thing about that Trader Joe's is it's easy to get to. It is a very small store, but parking is relatively easy. And also because I go early in the morning, they open at 8 a.m. and I'm usually there by 9, 9.30. The nice thing about that Trader Joe's is I usually can do a loop. There's a really good Walmart a little bit north of there if I need to go to Walmart for something. There's also a Rayleigh's nearby who has my favorite sourdough bread. And then I can hit a really good Costco on the way home that isn't crowded. And they just put in a gas station. <laughs> so, you know, all of these things that you want, you want an easy loop, right? And if I'm really ambitious, I can go another 15 miles north and go to Vacaville and hit up Sam's Club which I only do really when my sweetest batch blackberries are in season, which is not right now. So I usually do my shopping at the Fairfield Trader Joe's, and then I might hit up Rayleigh's and Costco, especially now that that Costco has gas on the way home. The other Trader Joe's I go to is the one in Napa, which is also about 20 miles north of us, but in a different direction. And the awesome thing about that Trader Joe's is it is in the same parking lot as Whole Foods. That is our closest Whole Foods. And there's a Pete's Coffee and a Target. So 
if I don't need to go to Costco and I feel like driving up to Napa, I don't always feel like driving up to Napa. I mean, you'd think I would because it's Napa and it's beautiful, but the traffic pattern is different and to go up to Fairfield is just a straight shot on the freeway, whereas to get up to Napa, I'm on more surface streets. But if I do want to go to Whole Foods, which is its own beacon of grocery light that I love, I will go to the Napa Trader Joe's and the Napa Whole Foods. And that would be my other way of going, going to Trader Joe's. I don't know why I think you will care about all of this, but it's a sleep podcast, so the bar is low. <laughs> The two other Trader Joe's that I sometimes will go to are on the other side of bridges. So if you live in the Bay Area, you will know what I'm talking about. But the Bay Area, simply by the name of Bay, it means water. And so and so there are bridges to get across these bodies of water. And to go across the bridge costs seven dollars. Now, I am in a financial position where I can absorb the $7, but I also give it some thought. Do I really want to spend $7 to go three miles in that direction? It just doesn't make sense unless I'm going to be doing more than one thing. And I mention this because there is a closer Trader Joe's in Pinnall that's super fast to get to, but it involves a toll. So I only go to that Trader Joe's when I'm going to Berkeley Bowl, which of course is its own oasis of grocery awesomeness. I'm kind of obsessed with Berkeley Bowl. So if I hit Berkeley Bowl, then I hit that Trader Joe's in Pinnell on the way home, and then I cross the bridge and it costs $7, but it's worth it because it involved Berkeley Bowl. I can only go to Berkeley Bowl if I pay a toll. <laughs> so, and I have found that it's almost always worth the $7 to get to go to Berkeley Bowl. But I digress, this is all about Trader Joe's. And then the fourth Trader Joe's is the one that's in Concord that I will go to if I'm somehow doing things in Walnut Creek and Concord. But again, a different bridge, the Venetia Bridge versus the Carquinez Bridge. It involves a bridge. So usually I go to the one in Fairfield. If I don't go to the one in Fairfield, I go to the one in Napa. And you don't even live here, so you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but I just needed to share with you about the wondrous abundance of Trader Joe's options that I have. <laughs> so, and yes, there are Trader Joe's in Berkeley, but parking is harder so I go to the Trader Joe's in Pinnell, even though the parking lot can get mobbed. I have learned the rhythm of it, so I always know how and where to find parking. You have to have a really good radar for parking sometimes when you want to shop at Trader Joe's. But let's go to their holiday guide. So this they just came out. This is the holiday guide fearless flyer for 2023. I'm going to start off by sharing with you one of my favorite holiday things from Trader Joe's that is not in the Fearless Flyer this year. I don't know how they could have left it out. It is in stores, though, and it is their peppermint bark. They have the best peppermint bark. If you're a peppermint bark fan, you have to try Trader Joe's version of it. Now, I don't buy it anymore because I don't eat sugar. And Wes likes it, but it's one of those things that if I buy it, Wes will eat the whole thing, which he can. I'm not saying he shouldn't or can't, but he typically doesn't want me to buy it because he'll eat the whole thing. So unless we're having company over, I typically don't buy the peppermint bark anymore. But one of the things that I love, not only is the peppermint bark wonderful, but it comes in a tin this very sweet, adorable tin. The tin has remained the same for years. And it is a flat tin. 
that is gracefully repurposed for many other things throughout the year. And it got me thinking how few things come in tins anymore. You know, our grandparents and parents had the opportunity to repurpose many different kinds of tins throughout their life. Right, the coffee can filled with change or screws or nails. So I know we have at least one Trader Joe's peppermint bark tin in the garage that Wes has repurposed. I don't know what's in it. I'm assuming it's some kind of screw or nail assortment. I don't know. But it's perfect if you need a place to put like spare buttons or sewing notions, especially if you don't sew very often and you just have, you know, like one of those little sewing kits and spare buttons. I, I don't know. Okay, so this is a little, this is a little segue into something that is not Trader Joe's related, but perhaps you will relate to it. I was thinking about how I would always have spare buttons from blouses I would buy when I was working in the corporate world. And they would always give you a spare button that I would never throw out, even if I no longer had the shirt. And I wonder sometimes what is happening in my mind that I think I must keep spare buttons. What am I going to do with them? So I am hereby giving myself permission to throw out all the spare buttons. <laughs> and rip the tags off of pillows and all of these things I think I must somehow hold on to in case I need them someday. But back to the peppermint bark and the tin, perhaps you will put your spare buttons in there or your sewing notions or your state quarters or your spare wa you know, washers and screws and nails and you know, when you put something together from Ikea and there's this spare bag of parts that you don't ever want to throw out because you might need them. The peppermint bark tin is perfect for that kind of stuff. And the candy's amazing. So good. So we're going to start off with another sweet treat that I actually have never had. And I don't, I don't know why I've never bought this. I know I don't buy it now because I don't eat sugar. But it's, it's a much beloved holiday treat from Trader Joe's. And it is the jingle jangle that comes in a tin. So another tin. This is a round tin. And I think it's black in color. So jingle jangle is an only a Trader Joe's assortment of a whole bunch of things that taste terrific bathed in chocolate. Inside this generously sized tin of Trader Joe's jingle jangle of course, the best title, the best name ever. You'll find mini pretzels covered with milk chocolate and dark chocolate drizzled with white chocolate, dark chocolate covered caramel corn, dark chocolate covered broken JoJo's cookies, which are like Oreos, milk chocolate gems with candy red coating, which are like M&Ms, and milk and dark chocolate mini peanut butter cups. I mean, it's brilliant. It's $9.99 for a 22.7 ounce tin. I, I think probably when I was eating sugar, the reason I never bought that is because I would have preferred the peppermint bark. You know, when I was shopping for things, I really was only going to spend $10 on one tin of candy or the other. I wasn't going to buy both. And the peppermint bark always won, hands down. For sure. So, I've never had Jingle Dangle and never will. They also have the best cookies. So good. They're chocolate stars. And they're these little shortbread cookies covered in chocolate with white nonpareils. So they have both dark chocolate stars and mint chocolate stars. Now, we were, Wes and I, when we were eating sugar, the mint chocolate stars were our go-to. They're smaller than the dark chocolate stars. 
And I would buy like five boxes because <laughs> we had to have them every year. We're, we're a mint chocolate family. They also have something which I haven't had, a taste test of caramels. So there's different flavors of caramels. I think it's wonderful that we have lived our way into a world where there are different flavors of caramels, just rather than one flavor of caramel we had growing up. So these include caramel mousse, salted tort, gingerbread, pear and cinnamon, sea salt, passion fruit, creme brulee, and salted lavender. Between you and me, that doesn't appeal. doesn't sound good. I don't like floral flavored things like lavender flavored, rose flavored. That's just not my thing. And again, if I was spending money on candy, I'd be getting the peppermint bark. They also have a gingerbread house kit, which sounds delightful. I've never really built a gingerbread house growing up Jewish. I helped friends create one once, but I don't have necessarily the urge to ever create my own gingerbread house. There's something new. I don't, I think it's new pretzel bread pudding and they have the headline pretzel period bread period pudding period for emphasis, which again, if I ate sugar would sound delicious and it involves salted caramel sauce. Sounds lovely. They then have their holiday candy cane Jojo's. So again, similar to Oreos, the sandwich cookie. And this is candy cane flavored, which I think I had years ago. I bought a box quote for the kids when we were hosting the holidays. Does anybody else do that? You buy a box or a plate or a container of something quote for company for the kids because you really want to try it. And they were good, but they didn't necessarily make me obsessed with them, which is fine. I, I don't need another food to be obsessed with, so I'm good with that. They have peppermint flavored baking chips, which again would be lovely if I was cooking with stuff like that. They have shimmering candy cane body butter. So I don't use a lot of lotions and scrubs and like that's not my thing and I'm not really entertained by the idea of putting things that smell like food on my body <laughs> because if I'm going to be involved with something that smells like food I want it to be food and I want to eat it I don't necessarily just want to smell it on me tantalizing me yet I cannot consume it <laughs> so that. I'm sure other people will be delighted by. It's not going to be my thing. They have an apple crumble pie, which I have to say I saw in the store and it looks amazing. A big red Belgian cookie collection. You know, the holidays, there's always some sort of cookie collection that once again, yes, comes in a tin. So cookie tins are also a thing. So these, this is a 35.2 ounce tin of 100 cookies. I'm sure they're delightful. I've never bought them. They have a, a sparkly soda. They're saying sip on something spritzy. It's a sensational new sparkling festive beverage made with grapefruit, cranberry, and orange juice concentrate. It sounds lovely. It's not my thing. I'm not a seltzer girl or a juice girl, but I could imagine buying that for other people. That sounds lovely. All right. And they have organic jumbo cinnamon rolls. Oh my God. Cinnamon rolls are the best thing ever, which of course I don't eat anymore, but I love them. They have a cinnamon bun inspired pancake and waffle mix and a cinnamon bun oat creamer. All of those things sound delightful. Some more sweets. They have chocolate mochi ice cream, 
dark chocolate covered peppermint creams. That sounds lovely. I, I was reading about this one earlier and I thought, this is, I am not the customer for this, but maybe you will be. Cranberry butter cookies. So they're butter cookies. Let's see, hold on, I need to read this. There's a hint of cinnamon and sweetened dried cranberries and butter cookies. They're from France, which I guess gives them a little extra, you know, cachet. But that wouldn't be my thing. I'm not a big one for cranberry flavored things. Cranberries are tart. I do love my cranberry chicken and I will have cranberry sauce for the holidays. But in terms of a cookie or candy, I don't need cranberries in that stuff. A few dried cranberries on a salad are okay for me. Just if you were wondering. They also have something that I haven't gotten. I'm not sure how I feel about them. They're onion confit swirls. So, so they're like a pastry that has onion confit swirled in it. And they look kind of interesting. So it says they are cooked low and slow with balsamic vinegar, sugar, salt, pepper, and garlic powder. This caramelized, almost jam-like mixture is rolled into a puff pastry, along with some Emmental cheese. So once they're cut and baked, the resulting mini crackers have that characteristically crumbly palmier texture. So they sound interesting. Wes does need onions, so I would be the only one eating them. So I haven't gotten them yet. If they're sampling them at the store at some point, I will try one and see what I think about them. But if you have gotten them and love them, please let me know. Okay, we are now on to the cheese portion of the Fearless Flyer. They have a creamy Gordigonzola style cheese. See, for me, I would never buy that because I'm never going to eat that much Gorgonzola. As I have shared with you before, if I buy any kind of cheese that isn't sliced cheese for a sandwich, I'm going to be the only one who eats it. So I really just have to stick with my Whole Foods little niblets of cheese that they sometimes have in the cheese section rather than buying a whole bunch of cheese from Trader Joe's. So I do like a little bit of crumbled gorgonzola in a salad once in a while, but I wouldn't buy just a whole bunch of gorgonzola. They have a figgy cheddar, which sounds good. Again, I don't eat that much cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese is not my favorite. I'll eat it, but I don't crave it. And then they have an Italian truffle cheese. So again, I know truffles are a big thing right now. It's not that I won't eat them, but I don't crave them. It's not a flavor profile that lights me up. So if you served me a charcuterie board at your home and these three cheeses were on them, I would delightfully try them all and enjoy them, I am sure but I do not need three hunks of any of these in my house. <laughs> they do have a scalloped cracker trio, though. I love a good cracker assortment. So, let's see, what are the, do they tell us what the three of them are? They're artfully scalloped, so that's good. Okay, so the three flavors of the scalloped cracker trio is garlic, rosemary, and a spicy chili. Okay, that's why I have not bought these. I do not like things that are spicy, meaning heat spicy. So I would not buy those. And if I were eating something off a charcuterie board, I would want to know that something has heat first. So please don't serve me these crackers. I mean, I'm sure that you might enjoy them. I'm not, I'm not saying they are not good crackers, but I don't like things that have chili in them. That's just me. And listen, your charcuterie board does not need to revolve around me. Your imaginary charcuterie board. You do not have to please me. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, they have a mini quiche duo. 
In theory, I like quiche. For some reason, every time I eat it, I get nauseous. I think there's there's a richness in the bechamel or whatever they use in the cream, and it does not agree with me, so I usually just skip right over the quiche. They have um, a prosciutto that they are seeing is a charcuterie superstar, so that's a pretty high mark for that. They have dates. It's so interesting to me that dates are so, dates are so cool now, I guess is the way I would say it. I remember as a kid when my mom would buy dates for something she was baking, I thought they were gross. I was like, ooh, no. And now dates are a thing. They're cool. Like you make all kinds of things with them. I think I've purchased them a couple of times to use as a sweetener when I was trying to do paleo, but I typically don't buy them anymore. And this time of year when you go into Trader Joe's, it's fun because they have all kinds of things for the holidays, right? They have plants, they have wreaths, they have flowers. It's very festive and a joy to be there. Now this is one I am contemplating, holiday vegetable hash. If you've tried this, you have to let me know. It is made of butternut squash, sweet potato, red onion, celery, and fresh herbs, including parsley, sage, and rosemary. So the veggies are chopped into a small dice, like typical meat and potatoes hash. But in this case, there's no corned beef or chorizo. So what can you do with it? You can roast it on a sheet pan with a drizzle of oil, then serve it as a colorful side dish. You can saute it on the stove top to a similar effect, or use it in place of a mirepoix when you concoct a seasonal soup. See, this sounds really good to me, and I would be the only one who ate it. But that would be okay. I could just do the holiday vegetable hash, and putting it on a sheet pan and toasting it up sounds really good. So if I get that, I'll report back to you. They have some sort of Italian pasta, a panopoli. I don't know what that is of pasta. It looks, oh, okay, so it looks like it's an assortment of pasta, of names I'm not going to try to pronounce. Looks lovely. There is a scented candle, crackling red fruits in the forest scented candle. Okay, apparently it makes a crackling sound as it burns. Well, I guess that's kind of cool. So it's layered with notes of pomegranate, juicy plum, ripe raspberry, and calming cedar. You know, I'm not a candle person. I used to be. Not really anymore. But if you're a candle person, this sounds like a lovely candle. They now have a whole page of their olive-related things. Now, I am the only one in our house who likes olives. If the kids are coming over, they like just the regular black canned olives, so not fancy schmancy olives. So all of these sound good to me, but I would only want one serving. So again, if we were going to have dinner together or something, I might get these so that we could each have a few of whatever this is, but I would not just buy these for myself. So there's fried olive bites. Sounds very interesting to me, but I would not buy them because I'd have to eat the whole thing. Blue cheese stuffed olives, and I can't pronounce the variety of olives that they are, so I'm going to skip that part. Olive fugace, which is a bread, an olive bread, which I love olive bread. Wes doesn't like it, though, so I don't get it because otherwise I'm eating the whole loaf. And jumbo pitted Greek kalmata olives. Big fan of olives, always have been. Also, the amount of sodium in them make me blow up. So I don't eat that many olives, even though I love them so much. Whenever I go to a salad bar and I can get some olives, I feel, I feel victorious. So on to more desserty kinds of things. There's something called a delicious duet of chocolate rondos. I have no idea what that is. Let's find out together. In musical terms, a rondo is a form of a song featuring a refrain that alternates in and out 
with at least one contrasting melodic theme. A rondo is an expertly crafted disc of chocolate featuring complementing bits of dried fruit or candied nuts like a confectionery conversation in and of itself. So there's the milk chocolate rondos with caramelized pecan crunch and the dark chocolate rondos sprinkled with raspberry and strawberry and tart cherry. I'm sure those are lovely. I don't know that they're my thing. Well, I also don't eat sugar, but if I was eating sugar, again, I would just be going for the peppermint bark. They have a pecan pie, and they have eggnog, which I've already shared with you. Eggnog is not my flavor profile because I never grew up with it. And pecan pie, listen, it's fantastic, and it's too rich for me. Like pecan pie, I, I don't necessarily choose into, or baklava. Some of these things are too sweet even for me, who loves everything sweet. And they do have a dark chocolate collection. Let's see what's in there. There's 16 dark chocolates that include, let's see, what, what's in it? Key lime pie, coconut crumble, salted caramel, and a few non-filled chocolates for the purists. I'm sure that would be delightful. However, for me, if I'm going for a box of chocolate, which I'm not because I don't eat sugar, but if I was... I would go to C's out here on the West Coast. Amazing chocolate. If I was in Chicago, I would go to Fannie Mae. And that's what I would do for box chocolate, just so you know. They do have stuff for the pups. So they have Trader Joe's Happy Holidays Peanut Butter and Vanilla Flavored Dog Treats. They do have their crossword puzzle which I did a little bit of so I could feel kind of smart. <laughs> so one across is curtains and the answer is drapes. I could just get so happy when I know the answer to a crossword puzzle. Even if the crossword puzzle is impossibly simple, I still feel victorious in my consciousness. Ooh, this sounds good. So, so, so Trader JoJo's are Trader Joe's version of the sandwich cookie that we love to call Oreos. And there's lots of different forms of them, Hydrox and right. So there's other kinds of sandwich cookies. So this is Trader Joe's astounding multi-flavor Jojo's. Fantastic. For a decade, this iconic hexagonally packaged assemblage of chocolate and robed Jojo's has dazzled customers with its four festive flavors, double chocolate, peppermint, peanut butter, and vanilla ginger. And now we also have Trader Joe's astounding multi-flavor mini pretzels. Like its JoJo's-centric sibling, this mini pretzel compilation contains a quadrilogy of candy-coated bite-sized pretzels so the flavors are coffee candy, topped with dark chocolatey drizzle, peanut butter candy topped with crumbled Jojo's and tiny colorful chocolate gems, and dark chocolate with bits of peppermint candy and milk chocolate dotted with a crunchy rainbow of nonpareils. Well, those sound delightful. They do a vegan gingerbread and they have more step up to the bar snack mix. That's the thing that has, you know, honey pretzels and honey roasted peanuts and cheddar crackers and stuff, which again, if it's at your house, I will delightfully indulge. Not going to buy it here because I will eat the whole thing. There's a whole strategy to these things, right? Like if, I were working in an office, which thank God I'm not. These are some of the things I would buy so that I could put a can of these, this snack mix out and say, look what I bought for everybody. And really I bought it so I could have a handful and not have to eat the whole thing. But it's a strategy, right? You've got to strategize on these things. 
I'm always mesmerized what other people put in their carts. It's like a whole window into their life, right? Their whole grocery strategy or home goods strategy. Like home, when I look into somebody's cart at home goods, it's like a whole window into something about their life. <laughs> so I'm always fascinated by what people buy. I tend to always buy the same things at Trader Joe's. Salad mix. I might get oats if I'm if I need more oats for my overnight oats. I get my dairy products there for the most part. We get different kinds of chips all the time. You know, I get um, some of their salad dressing is really good. I just like to wander. I love grocery shopping because I love food. So I love Trader Joe's. So thank you, Trader Joe's, for existing. And thank you for your brilliantly written Fearless Flyer. And I hope it's okay that I'm sharing it. Do you know I actually sent a direct message to Trader Joe's Instagram account to ask if I could read from their Fearless Flyer, and I never heard back from them. But I can't imagine that they wouldn't be happy about it, because it basically is a whole commercial, right? It's like, go to Trader Joe's and buy this delicious food. So hopefully we're all cool about that. So my beautiful friends, Trader Joe's holiday fearless flyer is here. Perhaps you will buy some of the peppermint bark or the jingle jangle and get a bonus tin that you can then fill with things that you don't know what you're going to do with, but you will keep for the next 10 years. And maybe you'll forget what's in the tin and you'll open it up and you'll be like, why do I have so many buttons? But that's part of life, right? You have a random stash of buttons and little packets of pieces from the furniture you built from Ikea that you don't know what you're supposed to do with. And the manual to a blender that maybe you don't even own anymore. Random things go in tins. And Trader Joe's has really good tins. <laughs> so there's a life lesson for you from Sleepy Bedtime Blessings at no extra charge. You're welcome. <laughs> so I wish you the sweetest of dreams. I wish you blessings. I wish you goodness. I wish you love. Thank you for keeping me company. I am grateful for you and we'll talk again soon. Thank you. I love you. <laughs>